Welcome to the Lutheran Saints and Ministry Worship Service on the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Lutheran Saints and Ministry is a collaborative made up of four Lutheran congregations, namely Abiding Christ and St. Mark's in Fairborn, Horizon Christ in Donaldsville, and Good Shepherd in West Milton. My name is Vicar Benjamin Prill, and our host congregation for today is Horizon Christ, which is obviously where I'm not at. I am still in my living room at home, asked to quarantine just for this one more week out of care for myself. I'm looking forward to being back in our church buildings next week and to hopefully seeing you all there. And now I invite you to join me to hear and grow in the word of the one true God. Let us begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us all our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. 
Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 86, beginning with verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not yet set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second lesson comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's good to see you again. Last week, our grandson, Matt, spent the night with us. And we're always happy to have one of our grandkids come and spend the night with us, and they're really helpful when they do. For example, 
The morning after Matt spent the night, he asked his grandma if there was anything he could do to help her out around the house. And she asked him if he would go out in the flower garden and pull some weeds. Now, it was a very hot day, and this was very hot work. But you know he did a good job. And by lunchtime, you couldn't find a single weed in our flower garden. Guess what? It rained that night, and by the next morning, a whole new batch of weeds had grown up where the old ones had been pulled, just like it had never been touched. You know, weeds are like that. They can be stubborn things and really hard to get rid of. Some people like to pull them out by the roots from the ground. Uh, some people spray like a poison on them to kill them. There's all kinds of ways to get rid of weeds in a flower garden, but there's always one problem. Last week, that Pastor June told you that she was raised on a farm. I don't know if you heard that in her sermon, but she was raised on a farm. Her, her dad and mom are still farmers, but she also admitted she wasn't a very good gardener. Well, Pastor Craig wasn't raised on a farm, and I'm even worse than she was. When flower seeds get planted and they come up, well, they all look alike to me. I can't tell the difference between what's a weed or what's not. I want to show you a picture and I want you to tell me which one of these is a weed and which one is not. Tell me if you can see the difference. Which of these is a good seed and which of these is a bad seed? Which one of these is a good plant and which one is a weed? It's hard to tell, isn't it? Got a secret. Even farmers would have trouble telling. Even good gardeners would have trouble telling the difference. The one on the top is a weed. The one on the bottom is mint, which tastes and smells very, very good. Even people can be hard to tell apart. Here are the pictures of two people. Which one of these two people is a bad person and which one is a good person? Hmm. It's hard to tell by just looking at them. Even harder to tell than the difference between weeds and good plants. It might help if we knew something about these two people, like do they help others? Do they feed the hungry? Do they go to church together? Are they kind to animals? Knowing this might help us to sort them out, right? But what if one of them is kind to cats and feeds and pets them, but hates dogs and kicks and yells at them? Would that person be a good person or a bad person? I suppose it depends on whether you like dogs or whether you like cats. Or should it? And what if someone thinks helping his neighbor is the right thing to do, but another one thinks that letting the neighbor learn to do for themselves and become a better person is the right thing to do? Which one of those people is right and which one is wrong? Which one is good and which one is bad? See, we are never all good and bad. The good and the bad are all mixed together inside of us. Kind of like a garden where all of the good plants and the bad plants grow up together. Where all the weeds and the mint grow up together. Because if it's hard for us to tell the good from the bad plants apart, I wonder how we could ever tell the good or the bad people apart. And I wonder how God does it. In our Bible reading for today, from Matthew, Jesus makes it clear that it's not our job to decide who is good and who is bad. God already knows that. Our job is to show the love of Jesus to everyone. Let's pray together. Dearest God, help us not to worry too much about who is good and who is bad. Instead, help us to trust you to make those decisions and help us to show the love of Jesus to everyone. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, and hope to see you again soon. I miss you in church. Take care. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore gra born grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? 
Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will be thrown into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. Praise to you, O Christ. My sermon today is entitled, Weeding Out Judgment. Last week, we heard the parable of the sower and his sowing of seed. But we were looking at the condition of the soil last week. Today, we'll look at a different parable, but it is very similar to what we heard last week. Who has at not some point asked that question? You may not have used those same words, and you may not have spoken it aloud, but I'll bet everyone has at some time or another asked the question. Where then did these weeds come from? Maybe you've read or watched the news and wondered, how did our world get in this shape? How did we get to this point? It's one headline after another. The killing of innocent people of color the escalation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in Gaza, the conflict around refugee children coming to American soil, and now a pandemic. It seems like the world is going absolutely crazy. Well, maybe life circumstances have left you asking yourself, how did my life get like this? What has become of me? We could all list the hurts and the wounds of life the betrayals, the resentment, the addictions, fears, and the loneliness, and on and on the list goes. Perhaps you face the death of a loved one, a devastating illness, or other tragedy, and want to know why, if God is good and loving, did this happen? We often live with the assumption that if we do good work, and we do work hard, and be nice, everything should work out as we want. That's the illusion with which the slaves in today's parable live. Master, they ask the farmer, did you not sow good seed in your field? Of course he did. They know he did. That's why they are so surprised when they discover the weeds. The weeds have shattered their illusion. This isn't supposed to happen. Where then did these weeds come from? You know, I planted a butterfly garden this spring and I really don't know where it went. The weeds seem to have taken over. When the seeds initially sprouted, I couldn't tell the weeds from the flowers. And now I can't pull the weeds because I may pull out some of the flowers that have not yet bloomed. So there is urgency to the question of the slaves. They want to know what happened and who is responsible, and so do we. That's why we want to know when we discover weeds in our fields, we want an explanation, 
and someone we can blame, hold accountable, and even punish. Far too often we see that in our political bickering, our Facebook posts, our murmurings behind the scenes, and our privately held opinions. Jesus, however, seems less interested in this approach than we are. He doesn't give it much time or attention. He says, an enemy has done this. That's it. He doesn't explain it. He doesn't identify nor name the enemy. He doesn't give instructions to find, drive out, and punish this enemy. Behind our desire for an explanation and the name of the culprit is a truth many of us neither like nor want to accept. It's one of the challenges of today's gospel. And you know, the gospel always challenges the way we think, see, act, and live. It's a challenge to become more than who we think we are. It's a challenge that arises every time we face the weeds of our life and our world. And as Martin Luther admonished, we are both saint and sinner, or in this parable, weeds and wheat. Interesting how those two words sound very similar. The reality, according to Jesus, is that our lives and our world are a field in which good and evil, life and death, joys and sorrows, that which we want and that which we don't want grow and live side by side. The wheat and the weeds stand together in our world and in each of our lives. That, Jesus says, is what the kingdom of heaven is like. The good news for us, it means that despite the weeds in and around us, the kingdom is still here. The weeds do not overcome or make absent God's kingdom. It may not be the fullness of the kingdom, but it is nevertheless the kingdom. But what about those weeds? What do we do about them? Surely we should do something, but not according to Jesus. Let them grow together until the harvest, he says. Well, that makes no sense. And if you talk to a farmer these days, it absolutely doesn't make any sense because now they have weed-proof soybeans and corn. How can we let them be? The weeds are bad and the wheat is good. We must do something. We need to take a stand, draw a line in the sand, and establish some boundaries. Don't you want us to pull the weeds, the slaves ask their master? No, for gathering in the weeds, you would just uproot the wheat along with them. Now these aren't just generic weeds. The parable speaks of a particular weed called zizania. It's sometimes known as darnel or false wheat. It grows with the wheat. It looks like wheat. Its roots intertwine with the roots of the real wheat. The difference between the two is not always ready apparent, as you can see in the slide. Darnell, which is also known as false wheat or toxic ryegrass, is on the left. And the wheat is on the right. And if you look closely, they both pretty much look like wheat. Well, they have one thing in common. They are both grasses. But one is not particularly good for human beings, and the other is. It seems that the separation between the wheat and the weeds is not as clear-cut or black and white as Facebook, the media, our politicians, and our personal opinions would have us often believe. In any event, we are not the ones to make that judgment. We are not the ones to uproot those we see as weeds. Jesus is very clear about that. Now, I have very little tolerance for craziness and idiocy in this world. 
which is a stumbling block for me because I want to take care of the weeds and get them out of the field or get them out of my field, as the case may be. Let them grow together until the harvest. Jesus shows more interest in growth than extermination. He is willing to wait and to be patient. If we are his followers, we too will wait and be patient amongst the weeds of our lives. While we patiently wait, let's not get too excited about the end of this parable. Let's not revel in and celebrate the end of the age and the coming of Jesus as some divine weed whacker. I don't think Jesus intended this parable to be taken literally, but rather with absolute seriousness. So, we do nothing? Just sit and wait? No, that's not what Jesus is saying. There's plenty to do, and it will be a challenge. The words that are translated as let them in Jesus' statement, let them grow, can also be translated as forgive them. It's the same words Jesus spoke from the cross in St. Luke's account of the gospel when he says, Father, forgive them. Even then on the cross, Jesus is unwilling to pull up the weeds. And certainly, there were quite a few weeds in that scenario. There is no place in Jesus' gospel for Christian vigilantism, by word or by action, against another or against ourselves. Jesus commands love. Love your enemy, love your neighbor, love yourself, but most of all, love God. Forgive the weeds? Love the weeds? Remember, I told you the gospel is always a challenge to us. Here's a brief story from my days as a professor of nursing in Flagstaff, Arizona. My students were assigned to a young Navajo adult with liver failure from alcoholism. One of the weeds. His life had been a mess. His liver was not salvageable, and he was honoring his traditional beliefs, so transplantation was out of the question for him. I assigned two students to care for him that day. He was so touched by the care and acceptance of the nursing students that he again stopped drinking resurrected the AA group at the hospital and gifted all of us with important gifts from his heart. He told me how much the acceptance and support of the students gave him hope and hope they did bring. So this nasty weed got disentangled and became a stalk of wheat. He died not long after that at age 37, but this time he died with hope and peace. And my students never forgot that experience as well. So yes, forgive them, love them. Maybe that's how the wheat begins to disentangle its roots from the weeds and show itself to be wheat and not a weed. Maybe love and forgiveness are what life in the mixed field of God's kingdom and this world is like. To God be the glory. Amen.
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift our hearts, hands, and voices in prayer to God on behalf of all people. Holy Father, give to your church on earth the faith and courage to proclaim the crucified and risen Jesus, in whom you have revealed your nature and your heart. We thank you for saying what we often ignore, that we are at best weedy fields. We thank you for giving us Jesus' words to stand against all that seeks to uproot and destroy. We thank you for his patient, grace-filled tending that forgives our sins and heals broken lives. We thank you for your promise to gather us in from every race, tribe, and nation as a holy and precious people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look at our congregations and our hearts and confess that we are fields sown with weeds and wheat. Bless the work of your Lutheran saints in ministry. By your grace, help us to bear one another's faults with patience and kindness, and remind us that you alone can make us pure and holy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, there are no perfect rulers, only broken people in a fallen world. Be with those who seek to lead us, and be with your people as we groan in travail, pleading for freedom from bondage and despair. We cry out for healing and wholeness and for Sabbath rest. Until that day, make us humble, gentle, and wise, and heal any evil we might cause. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son counseled, letting weeds and wheat grow together. For the sake of your people, stem the spread of weeds, end all violence, injustice, and hatred. We plead on behalf of those in our military, our police, and all first responders. Give them integrity and honor that by their labors, those they serve may have a measure of justice and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, sickness and sorrow take root in every life. We know you desire abundant life for your servants, so we are bold to pray for our shut-ins, for all who suffer, and those we name in the silence of our hearts. Grant them health, hope, and comfort. And in the fullness of time, grant them the perfect healing you promised in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for those who have gone before us and are now at rest in you. We pray for those whose grief runs deep. Teach us to pray confidently, knowing you have made us your children. Teach us to care and encourage, comfort and forgive, knowing you will prosper your handiwork. And gather us to yourself as a rich and fruitful harvest in Christ, that with all forgiven sinners, we may live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By the power of your Holy Spirit, receive these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. And now abide in peace and serve the Lord.